Alrighty, so let's start with uh, today's chapter called Dimensions. So we're going to try to dimension this uh, drawing that you see over here. It's a mechanical template. So you can go File, New, and use the mechanical template like we've done before. Uh, so I have to make sure, first of all, that I'm on my Dimensions layer. Again, the mechanical template comes with these layers, so you just have to go and open that. Then, uh, where do I start with my dimension? Now, there are a couple places that I can do my dimensions from. One is just the home screen tab. You have the different dimensions, the basic dimensions that you mostly need. You just click on those, and then you have access to all these dimensions. Now, uh, I can even annotate my dimensions like we talked in, like I talked in the previous class. Uh, I think about yesterday. So you can go and refer to that class to see how uh, the annotation dimension is done, and um, what is uh, what do you call it? What is the use of using annotative dimensioning? So uh, if I wanted, I could just go over here and do the dimensions, or I can even go to annotate and use this uh, panel over here to do the same exact dimensions. So if you see right now, it's in a standard uh, dimension style. I could always change it to uh, annotate. Like remember, I went over here, I hit modify, and went to fit, and click on that. And that makes your dimensioning annotative. Right? So for this particular example, I'm not going to use annotative dimensioning. I'm just going to use standard dimensioning and uh, dimension my object with uh, different dimension uh, types that I have. Starting with the linear dimension, uh, as the image shows, the dimension is horizontal, vertical, or rotated, right? So just click on that. Now I want a dimension from here till the center of this circle, so that's my second click. And then I'm going down to give location of where my dimension is going to be. And I can go back there Maybe I want the dimension from this circle to this circle going down, and I'm, I want to snap it right to in the same line, so everything falls onto the same line. Now let's go to maybe dimensioning the third one. Instead of going clicking that, I can always hit the space bar or enter, and it takes me to the previous command which I used, which was again dimensioning. And pick that, I'm going down, and make sure that the third snap is over here, or else your dimension might just go here, right? So you don't want that. You want everything to be in the straight line. So I snap the third point there. Again, I hit space bar to go back to the same command from here till maybe there. And boom. And from there till, till the end. So that's the overall dimension that I have used. So this was just using the linear dimension option, which is the first one, uh, to put some linear dimension. Now I could even uh, put it in this direction, as in I could go in vertical. Go dimension, click on that one, center of the circle, and go go towards your left for the third click. Space bar from here to there, and then I want to snap it right there. Same thing from there till there snap it right there. Okay, So I could use my linear dimension for going vertical, for going horizontal, or if I wanted to get the distance between this and that, see, I could even get it like this, right? So it's up to me how I want to use my linear dimension, but that's how you would use your linear dimension. Now the next one in there is the align dimension. Align dimension is for like the picture shows, for dimensioning something which is at a certain angle, or dimensioning two points uh, in an angular fashion. Uh, for example, I, I want to dimension between the center of this circle and the center of this circle at that angle. Okay, see how easy that was? So this is the aligned dimension. It dimensions with respect to um, it dimensions with respect to what do you call it, the angle that you have. Now, for instance, if this was at a certain angle, now I wanted to dimension this. So I would most probably be using the line dimension, 
clicking on one end, clicking on the other end, and giving the location for my third dimension. Now dimensions usually always have to go outside your drawing area. It's not a good practice to have it on the inside. So make sure whenever you use your dimensioning, you place your dimensions in the right place so it doesn't, um, it doesn't confuse anyone while reading your drawing. Okay? But when you get to more and more dimensioning objects, you would understand uh, how uh, what is the right way of dimensioning, how to dimension objects, and how to be perfect, and how to be more precise. So now that was about a line dimension. Again, you have to pick two points on any uh, surface or any angle. I could pick this point and that point if I wanted, and go give my third click in that direction. Okay. So the same thing, I wouldn't be able to do it with the linear dimension, so that's why I will have to use my align dimension. Now I can just go back to how my drawing was before. Okay, so that was the aligned dimension. Now the next one is angular dimension. What the angular dimension does is just as you see it in the picture, it shows you the angle between two lines. So if I click on the angular, I click on the first line, click on the second line, and see it should give me 90 degrees. You see that? So it's giving me 90 degrees. So I can click anywhere on the drawing to where I want the dimension to show. I could click two different lines. I'm just going to draw maybe a line from there to here. Okay. Okay. Now I'm going to dimension oh, the angular dimension from here to here and see how much that is. See, the outside angle is 117 and the inside angle is 63. Okay. So that's where you would use, uh, uh, what do you call it, angular dimension to get angle between any two lines. I don't know what's the angle between these two. I can always go click, click the first line, click the second line, and show the location for the third, uh, for the location of my dimension. So that's how angular dimension works. <coughs> now let's go to more of these. Now the next one we have is the arc length. Now again what the arc length does, it shows the length of the arc that you have used. So you have to make sure that when you're using the arc length tool, you're using it on an arc. For instance, in this drawing, this is the arc. All I have to do is click on the arc and specify the arc length location. So where do I want to place the location? Closer, outside, inside. Mostly it's outside, so I'm going to specify my location right there. So it gives me the arc length of 15.708 for this one. Okay, so whenever you want to uh, dimension the arc, this is how you would do. Now let's see if this works on a circle. See, it doesn't. So it will work only on an arc. So you have to make sure you have an arc when you're using this tool. Click on the arc and give it where you want to place it. So it gives you the exact dimension of your arc. You could always click on it and move it later on and modify the location of your text. Just by clicking on it, it gives me these grips. I can make it go out. I can click on this, make it go in. I can click on the center, make it go up. If you want to align your text, because sometimes it's overlapping with your with your object lines, so you could always modify that by just using these grips. And there are some other tools as well which we will talk uh, in the length of this class when it comes to working with uh, modifying the location of your text. Okay, so it looks like I won't be able to finish this class in 15 minutes. It will go for part two, so make sure you stay tuned. So I'll go to the next one is the radius. Now what the radius does it specifies the radius of, again, it has to have an arc. You cannot use the radius tool for a circle. So in this clay case, this is the only arc that we have. So I'm going to go there, go click the radius, as simple as clicking on the arc or the radius, and then giving it a location as to where I want to place that. So now the radius in this case is 5. Zero. 
Okay, and you see the symbol for radius. Symbol for radius is a capital letter R. I cannot dimension an arc as a diameter. I cannot dimension this as diameter 10. So that's wrong. That's against the standard. So if you are working with radius, you have to make sure that the radius always goes on an arc and not on a circle or anything else. Now, uh, the dimension for radius, again, I will show so that you follow. Click on the dimension for the radius, click on the arc, and give it a location to wherever you want it. Okay. Again, in this case, my radius is 5.0. Now, let's jump to another one. Now, the other one is diameter. Now, you see the symbol diameter is from one end to the other end. Radius is just from the center to the end, right? So I click the diameter, and I have a lot of different circles over here which I could use uh, as part of my uh, diameter. So I could click on this one and give it a location, 2.0. Could click on this one and give it a location, that's 4.0. Okay, so it works pretty much similar like the radius tool, but you are clicking on the circle instead of the arc and you get the dimension. Now let's go to uh, to the last one that we see over here is the ordinate dimensioning. Now if you see the picture, see how ordinate dimensioning starts? It starts at um, a certain point, like in this case it's 0, 0, if you look all the way in the lower left hand corner and the dimensions go from 0 going vertical and going horizontal, as in going on the x-axis and going on the y-axis. So for that, if I would want to give this object uh, ordinate dimension, first thing I will have to do is obviously erase the dimension that I already have. Then I have to give it a point of origin, which is 0, 0. Now to do that, uh, I will move this object to the origin, which is 0, 0 and then dimension it from there. Because I could still dimension it from here, but uh, the location of this point on the screen, if you look down uh, on your status bar all the way to the left, it shows minus 49.118. You know, it shows the x-axis, y at 21, 9, 8, 6, and, and z at 0. But I want to make sure that it's on 0, 0, 0. So that would be my start point for a start point for dimensioning. So I am going to, right now, just draw a line using the line command, hit enter, specify first point of line. I specify, I want to specify right there because I know that that's where 0, 0, 0 is. But to specify, I'm going to type 0, 0, enter. See, and specify next point, it doesn't matter where I click, I'll click anywhere on the screen. Now I'm sure that my 0, 0, 0 is right here. So I will move my whole drawing from this point till that point. So now I am sure my drawing is lined up at this point to 0, 0, 0. Now I could go ahead and use this ordinate dimension starting with here, maybe going down. See that? 0, 0. Then I go spacebar again. I'm going to make sure that I'm lining it up in the same and that one then the third one so ordinate dimension is used for uh, for exercises where you have a lot of circles and stuff like that right so it makes it easier to find the location then I need that one and I have to make sure I'm in line so if you see it start with zero then it went to two five eight Till wherever I go in the end, maybe here. Okay. I could have it even lined up straight. It's up to me. Okay, so that's ordinate dimensioning on this axis. Then I could go in from here. See, that's zero. Then this is two. That's four. That's six. And that only thing I have to make sure is my drawing is aligned or starts with 0, 0, 0, and then that's where I do my ordinate dimensions. With. Again, we have a lot to cover in dimensioning, so stay tuned. I will be back with the with the part two. Thank you.